welcome back guys uh thank you for joining us um before i start i would like to send a vote of thanks to the following people for the great job they have done in training uh, uh teachers and also giving resources to teachers so that they can send these resources to the students so that they can pass their exams uh, all of them are facilitators and they really have done a great job and they have provided us with enough support we thank you so much may this message reach you where you are madam susan fais uh, i don't know whether i've pronounced it correctly uh, is an umarus uh, umarus moderator uh, madam redin kuruga uh, this one is a chief marker for paper 2 vadika maharaj uh, is uh, a facilitator um in that part of western van wick van wick grizelda uh, is also a facilitator to the side of sedi bang uh madam nontlanta uh this is also another facilitator for the side of uh, and then we also have uh my facilitator also who is uh fauzi ramadan uh Uh, for from Johannesburg West please don't forget that you can download these notes you can download uh, a memorandum and the notes using the link below don't forget to uh, download it if you need them on your phone so that you can also practice if you have any challenge communicate to us we'll try to solve those problem so that we see that every student in this country can pass All right today we are going to look at uh what we call uh human reproduction MCD as usual taking you over this subtopic All right if you get this diagram what is the first thing you need to know what is the first thing you need to know if you see such a diagram diagram below represent endocrine gland endocrine gland a and events that take place in the ovary during menstrual cycle in human in other words gland a is produces a hormone which is used in the uh, ovarian cycle we have only two hormones uh, based on our syllabus which are being released uh from the brain and then they work in the ovarian cycle the first one is a uh, luteinizing hormone the second one is follicular stimulating hormone so it means that uh those hormones which are be going down must either be luteinizing hormone or follicular stimulating hormone don't forget to write the correct spelling so you're saying gland a structure b follicosmating hormone basically now we see that this is follicosmating hormone if this is follicosmating hormone automatically this one is going to be luteinizing hormone because we said you only have two hormones and follicosmating hormones they have talked about it so the next hormone must be luteinizing hormone and then what is this this is the mature graphian follicle this is the ovum and the process which is taking place here it is a uh, ovulation and then once ovulation takes place you go to uh what you call corpus luteum so this is the empty uh graphian follicle which has turned into corpus luteum so basically we have seen it we said this is a mature graphian follicle and then this is the developing follicle these are the developing follicles All right, let's start to answer the questions and then we see. Saying so gland gland A, we have seen it that gland A uh, is pituitary gland or sometimes we can call it pituitary gland or hypo hypo uh physis. Pituitary gland or hypophysis, then structure B, structure B is here uh, which is the graphian follicle. So we prefer to say mature mature 
mature because even this one is graphene follicle even this one is mature is is graphene follicle even this one is graphene follicle that one is graphene follicle so what is the difference between this and this so the difference is this one is mature ready to produce the ovum so it is mature uh, graphene graphene uh, graphene follicle follicle it's mature graphian follicle and then structures process c we have seen it uh process c we say that this is ovulation and then we are saying that uh structure d we say this is corpus uh lorium corpus corpus uh, you don't forget uh, between corpus lorium and corpus callosum corpus callosum is found in the brain while corpus lorium is found in the uh, reproductive system so um we go to the next equation they're saying that structure d we have seen it state the effect of estrogen uh, levels in the blood if gland a stops secreting follicle stimulating hormone so if they're saying the effect of estrogen in the blood if a gland a stops secreting follicle stimulating hormone so uh basically you have to know what is the effect it's one mark but you have to know the criteria behind what is the effect of uh of follicosmate what's the function of follicosmating hormone so the function of follicosmating hormone the answer is already there is hormone that stimulates the graphene follicle that's the answer already so for the function of follicosmating hormone so if the graphene follicle does not develop and we know that this graphene follicle is the one which produces uh estrogen so if graphene follicle has not developed then the level of estrogen uh will not uh estrogen will not be produced therefore the level will not increase it will either uh remain low or it will decrease because the one which was there has been used up so it will remain low or it will decrease then what state one function of of lh lh we said it's a luteinizing hormone it has two functions the first one it triggers it it causes this process to occur it triggers triggers ovulation or stimulates ovulation number two changes changes this changes the empty graphene follicle this empty graphene follicle into corpus lorium so they only want one function then when we go to another structure it is for a male the other one was for a female now we are going to the structure for the male uh you need to know how at least to label this is vas deferens yes and then uh, uh this is uh epididymis this is the outer part of the testis which is the scrotum and then this is the testis so now let's label let's label based on the uh uh the the, the question part a we have seen it is testis part b we have seen it it is uh, epididymis and then part c we have seen it that it is scrotum uh don't forget to write the correct spelling for a p d dimis yes a p d dimis uh, and also the correct spelling for uh testis the test is one ne? but testis if there are many testis if it's what if it's one and then this one is uh scroll is scrotum so uh describe the process of spermatogenesis i explained this uh, the other time when i was describing uh the paper of 2022 uh, for an exam um for june and then uh remember that we are in a a period of you have to follow what you call the examination guideline of 2021 so if you follow the one for 20, 2017 then it won't give you the some of the things will be find them changed and then that, not that much detailed so here what you need however much the book is showing you a lot of things 
please follow this if you also use our book for uh, uh, the, the distinction material uh, still you can find it correct so what do you write here the process of spermatogenesis under the influence of testosterone so it means that that's the hormone that's the what the hormone responsible uh, for development of the sperms under the influence of testosterone the diploid cell the diploid cell so the diploid cell the cell which has to end will undergo or will undergo meiosis so we also you mentioning the word meiosis we shall give you a tick found in the seminiferous tube we need to know where is it found found in the seminiferous tube to form a haploid a haploid sperm cell or to form haploid so basically you have one cell which is 2n will undergo meiosis here i remember that you form two kinds of meiosis uh, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 will undergo this under the influence this cell will undergo meiosis but it, what causes it to undergo meiosis it is the testosterone that's why where is this testosterone and this cell found they're found in the uh seminiferous tubes how do you call these cells which uh select themselves out to undergo meiosis we call them germ cells what do they form they form the sperms sperms so basically that's it the germ cell will undergo meiosis under the influence of testosterone in the seminiferous tube to form uh, a haploid sperm cell or you can say under the influence of testosterone the diploid cell that is the germinal epithelium uh, will undergo meiosis uh, uh, to form the sperm cells in the seminiferous tubes so we need to know the, the hormone we need to know uh, what will undergo meiosis that is the diploid cells the beginning is to end and then where is it found it's found in the seminiferous tube and which process will undergo which is the process is meiosis and what will they form which is what which is the sperms that's what we want in this regard if they ex ask you to explain spermatogenesis the same story when you go to oogenesis then we go to another question explain why a doctor would advise the man to wear underwear that is not tight so remember that whenever you are tight the pressure increases and in the moment the pressure increases in most cases the pressure is associated with the high temperatures and then if the high temperatures are there then definitely uh, the temperatures are going to exceed the normal temperatures at which sperms are being produced from therefore it means that it's going to lower the sperm count that is the basics behind that but now how do you answer that in the exam maybe you can say that the tight underwear will uh, the tight underwear will put testes close to the body when you put it in tight underwear it will pull the testes né? close to the body yes and then this will cause testes to have high high temperatures or too much temperatures yes and then this will affect the sperm maturation negatively don't say it affect the sperm maturation how negatively it means that it will it will lower yes it will lower how many and the rate of these sperms maturing so if they there are less sperms which are being produced it means that the number of sperms at the end will be low that's why we are saying that it's going to reduce the sperm count oh you 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 can explain it in in any other way as long as you talk about that the testes are going to be a little bit close to the body and then once they are close to the body they're gonna have higher temperature more than the temperature needed for the sperm production and then this will influence the sperm maturation 
and production and hence the low sperm count will come in so please don't forget to uh, explain that then they're saying that during during vasectomy vasectomy is to cut is to cut these testes when you cut this uh, vas deferens is what you call vasectomy so they are saying that during vasectomy explain one reason why a man who number one uh, does not want to have children will choose to have vasectomy this vasectomy does not mean that if your uh, vas deferens are cut you cannot undergo sexual intercourse you cannot have sex it does not mean that because uh, the the penis to erect is not connected to the 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 testes the penis to erect is connected to the blood being supplied to the the penis this person the blood will be still being supplied the the the, the tissues of the the penis therefore this person can erect and can have sex if you cut the vas deferens the only thing vas deferens is going to do is that the semen which are being produced remember we have the gland of uh prostate gland the uh, corpus gland and the semen of vesco they will produce a fluid and that fluid will not have sperms so there will be no sperms but that fluid will be there the fluids will be there but you will not have what sperms and if the sperms are not produced so what will happen it means that the semen which are produced cannot fertilize the ovum hence there is no child but the person can still have the what the uh, the sexual intercourse so what is the answer in the exam you can say that there will be no sperm in the semen therefore no fertilization will take place so no sperm no fertilization no sperms no fertilization so we will have no fertilization yes so if you don't have sperm no fertilization part b had a vasectomy is still capable of ejaculation why is it that this person is able to produce other uh, fluid from the the the, the 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 body when you are ejaculating is because i've uh, i've told you that you still have the other glands look so vasectomy is here and then the glands are here and then the penis is here so you have the vas deferens you have the corpus gland and then you have the prostate gland so other fluids will come from those glands and they will make uh ejaculation possible hence you 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 can still enjoy sex all right question 12 the second another question is about still reproduction the first one was about female the next one was is about male now this one is both male and female all right they're saying diagram below represents structures of uh an ovum and the sperm so you have to know how to label at least to try what is this this is the jelly like layer what is this this is the cytoplasm what is this this is the acrosome what is this this is the nucleus what's this it's a middle piece or my mitochondria and then what is this this can be a tail or flagellum so identify part a they have said it you like layer part b uh cytoplasm part c uh, acrosome you have to know the function of each name the process involving uh, name the process involving meiosis that lead to formation of the ovum you see now they want formation of or production of the ovum so because it is ovum so it's gonna be it's gonna be oogenesis and then i say write down the letter write down only the letter of the part uh, of the sperm that enters the ovum that enters the ovum 
the, the letter of the part which enters the ovum. So basically, if you look at the sperm during fertilization, this part will go, will remain out. And then this part will be used to digest. To digest the membrane of the ovum. It is only this nucleus which will enter the, uh, the, the, the ovum. And then the haploid nucleus of the sperm will fuse with the haploid nucleus of the ovum. And then the haploid zygote or diploid zygote is formed. So uh, basically it's going to be the nucleus. And which part is that? Is part, part, part D. Part D yeah, is the one which is going to be used. Then they are saying that right down only, um, right down only layers of the parts that enable the sperm to move towards the ovum. So if you look at uh, what provides energy, we shall see that the middle piece and the flagellum or the tail are the one which are used. So the middle piece, middle piece will provide mitochondria. And mitochondria is responsible for energy. And then this one, it will provide propulsion, uh, propulsion force, the forward force, so that now the sperm can move forward. Yes. Then they are saying that um, now we are going to process of fertilization. The semantic uh, diagram below shows a human ovum that is about to be fertilized. The diagram is not drawn to scale. All right, they're saying what is part A? We say we saw that part A, uh, part A is the jelly-like layer. What is part B? Uh, remember this is part B comes up to here, yeah, up to there, that darker layer. Remember this is a cell, and all cells they have a membrane which protects them, allow gases, substances to go through, which we call cell, the membrane of the cell, the membrane of the cell, which we call cell membrane. So the nucleus is there. Remember, this is an animal cell. Therefore, B becomes the cell membrane. What is C? C, uh, you have the fluid there which we call cytoplasm, the fluid of the cell. And then what is D? D, you see that is the nucleus of the sperm. Nucleus. And then what is E? E is the acrosome. And then what is F? F is the nucleus, nucleus of the ovum. And then what is G? G is the middle uh peace middle peace so basically we have labeled it so a they want a we have seen it a is the uh, gel like layer b b is the uh cell membrane the membrane of the cell or plasma membrane then c is the cyto cytoplasm and then f f was f f is the nucleus of the of the ovum so now give the letter and the name of the part that uh -huh, contain mitochondrion we have seen it that mitochondrion are being stored in here it's one is mitochondrion if there are many so the answer is g and the part is middle piece contain enzyme required for penetration uh uh of the sperm into the ovum so it is this it has the enzyme we don't need to know the name of the enzyme then the part we are saying that it is e and the part is acrosome you don't need to know the enzymes uh, because this is not uh, our syllabus then they're saying d c uh, will enter the ovum during fertilization and that is the nucleus of the sperm which is part d nucleus of the of the sperm and then here we have the structure of the sperm you're saying that uh you're saying that a b 
See now, we have tried to answer questions concerning about a spam. So there is no way you they can bring a question you have never seen about a spam, about these uh, uh, structures of the spam and the ovum. So we're going to go to even the graph. We also explain. We're going to explain all topics in such a way that there is no way you can fail this. There is no way. And if you do this, you go back and uh, listen to this before the exam, before you write the exam, look and at least you are reading like this, then automatically just ex uh, guarantee yourself uh, a distinction. All right. Then they are saying that um, what is part A? We have said acrosome, part B, nucleus, part C, middle piece, part D, the flagellum or the tail. They are saying that identify B, we have seen it. We have seen it, it is uh, nucleus, part D. We have seen it is the tail. Um, then they are saying that explain one way in which the sperm cell is adapted to ensure effective movement. Whenever they talk about movement, you talk about the parts which help the sperm to move. And we only have two parts which help the sperm. Adaptation is the part and the function. The first one is the tail. Yes, the tail, this pro, 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 provide uh, the forward force or pro, provide the propulsion what? force. So it allows uh, movement, movement to take place. Uh, so basically this is for force. And then number two is the middle, this part, middle piece. Uh, middle piece. This one uh, provides the, it has mitochondria which are responsible for production of energy. Yes, production of what energy? Explain the consequence uh, for reproduction if the sperm did not have part A. What is part A? It is the is the acrosome. So what is the function? You first ask yourself, what is the function of the acrosome? The function of acrosome is to release enzymes which are used to digest the membrane of the ovum so that the sperm can penetrate during fertilization. So the major function is to contain enzymes which digest the membrane of the ovum so that the uh, fertilization can take place. So if part A is not there, it means that that will not take place. It will not happen. So basically, no acrosome, no acrosome will be present. So the word no acrosome, yes. And then therefore, there will be no enzymes present and the sperm will not be able to penetrate the ovum and therefore no fertilization. If there is no acrosome, there is no enzymes and the sperm will not be able to penetrate the ovum and the no fertilization will take place. At least you will have um, uh, something like four marks out of three, and then we'll be able to obtain those marks. Guys, please watch the, these videos. Uh, forward them to others so that they can also benefit. If you have a question, we always we are here to try to answer those questions because some of these questions we do are as a result of other students trying to ask for help. Now you have another question, uh, process. This is process we have from the sperm to the development. Now I think now we know the structure of the sperm. You see that they keep on repeating these questions over and over and over again. So what makes you not to not to to memorize it? What makes you to go to the exam when you don't know this? I don't see any reason for that. Acrosome. We have seen it nucleus, we have seen it uh, mitochondria or middle piece, we have seen it based on the question which is being asked, most especially if the line is not clear. Identify A, we have seen it acrosome, name the organelle found in large numbers in part C, we have seen them, you see, it is mitochondria, then they are saying give the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 only on the diagram uh, representing morula, what is a morula? And what is a blastula or a blastocyte? Blastocyte or blastocyst, the way you pronounce it, as long as, uh, remember, a morula is just a ball of cells. A ball of cells. This ball of cells 
has no hole at all. So you look for something which is like that. And then a blastula is a hollow ball of cells. It must have a hole. Is a hollow ball of cells. So you look for something which has the hole. So basically, morula is gonna be uh, number three. Uh, is gonna be number three, and then blastula is gonna be number one. And then they are saying uh, the structure that will implant in the nucleus. Which structure will implant? The moment you form a, a, a blastula, it's going to form finger-like projections, which you call chorionic villi, which are used for implantation. So basically, it's going to be number one again. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be number one. Give the letter and the name of the part that will enter the ovum during paralyzation. This is the second time they're asking the second same question. So it is B and it is what is new nucleus. Uh -huh. Then they're saying that name the type of cell division that will occur to produce the structure structure in three. So the moment you have a sperm, the moment you have uh, a sperm, yes, and then you have the ovum, nucleus, nucleus. This nucleus comes here, and then you have a nucleus of a sperm and the nucleus of the ovum. You form a zygote, a zygote. This zygote will start to undergo mitosis repeatedly to form a ball of cells, the ball of cells which we call morula. The mor uh, morula will still continue undergoing mitosis and starts to uh, form the hole in, uh, in the middle or in the center and then forms a hollow ball of cells, which we call the blastula. The blastula will form the outer layer, which is going to call chorion, and the outer layer is going to form finger-like projection, which we call the chorionic viri, for implantation to take place. So, which process results in the multiplication of these cells? The process is called mitosis. Mitosis. So, I've explained the development of the zygote until implantation. Let me repeat. Uh, yes, we have seen that uh, sperm fuses with the ovum to form a ball of, uh, to form a zygote. You see, these are two nuclei, and they form uh, a zygote. A zygote you undergo mitosis to form a ball of cells. A ball of cells uh, will continue. This ball of cells we call it uh, morula, and then this ball of cells will undergo continue undergoing mitosis to form a hollow ball of cells, which we call uh, bla. Stula, which forms the outer layer, we call it chorion, and then the chorion forms finger-like projection, which we call chorionic viri. Basically, this is one, this is two, this is three, it's one, it's two, it's three, and then it's four. Then, um, ah, the process I was trying to explain is here. The diagram probably represents a sequence of events that may take place inside the human female reproductive system. Identify the process taking place uh, two, 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 at two. Where's two? You see? Zygote from ball of cells, which you call morula. So diagram, oh, diagram one. Diagram one, you see sperm fusing with the uh, ovum. You form a form. The the zygote. So the, the process is fertilization. State the type of cell division that takes place at two. Here it is mitosis. And then they are saying that name two functional extra embryonic membrane that are produced by structure C. Structure C. They are saying functional. It means that something which is functioning. Uh, we have four extra embryonic membranes. Uh, we have the chorion, alontois, uh, um, yolk sac and then uh, yolk sac and then amnion. But in this case, in humans, we only have the chorion, the chorion, and the amnion. Amnion, amnion, yes. 
the chorion and amnion. We don't have the yolk sac. We don't have uh, because our egg doesn't have the yolk. Yes, and then we don't have uh, the allantois because uh, uh, this excretion does not take place. Uh, it, it does not deposit the wastes in there. Excretion will take place uh, in the placenta or through the placenta. That's where the gases are being removed and then useful substances will come in. So it takes place. So the placenta will take the role of the allantois in case of the amniotic egg. Yes, identify uh, the stage of development indicated by, okay, A, A, what is happening there? That is a zygote. And then B, it is a morula. And then C, is a hollow ball of cells, which we call blastula. Yes, or blastocyst. Make sure that you write the correct spelling. Name the part of the female reproductive system where these events, where the events in the diagram above usually take place. Where do we find this? They occur in the fallopian tube because fertilization will take place uh, in the fallopian tube. Will take place in the fallopian tube. If this is a simple structure, yes, yes. Uh, fertilization will take place here and then these events will keep on moving until they reach here. Once they reach here, then implantation will take place on the walls of the uh, endometrium. But all these events we are seeing, they are, they, are, they are taking place from the ovary, they are moving, they take place along the fallopian tube. Give the chromosome number uh, of cell at A. Chromosome number cell at A. Remember, sperm is haploid, ovum is haploid, and then when they form, they form 2N, which is a diploid. The remaining ones are diploids until they produce a sperm again. So they're saying uh, give the chromosome number of the cell. They want the chromosome number, and they say that this is a human uh, diagram. Therefore, if it is 23 here, 23 here, therefore this is going to be 40 six chromosomes but uh this is for an individual who is normal but here they are saying that if a child had down syndrome so remember down syndrome you have an extra chromosome on chromosome number 23 so it means that it's going to be 46 plus an extra chromosome which makes them to be 47 so the answer is going to be 47 because of the condition of down syndrome of an extra chromosome on chromosome number 21 so we're just going to break and then just a uh, few seconds we're gonna come back and then we explain the remaining uh, sub topics we still have a lot of questions which you have to exhaust so that by the time you write the exams you can do this you can do this any day tomorrow make sure that by tomorrow everything is ready at least you go to the exam and then you write i thank everybody who is watching uh, the next episode we will talk about those people who are always uh, watching and commenting and asking questions uh, we thank you so much at least you made us believe that what we are doing at least is helping some people outside there and this give us more energy to do more and more and the hunt for more for you thank you very much for watching